The most important thing that the West needs to know about Islam today is that it has a political character and that it is not simply a religion, but it is a religion or a belief system that mandates warfare against unbelievers for the purpose of establishing a societal model that is absolutely incompatible with Western society. Americans need to know this, Western Europeans need to know this because Muslims are coming into Western countries while holding these beliefs and intending to act upon them. They are the motivations behind modern terrorist activity and they are the goals of, the, of millions of Muslims in the United States and around the world. We need to know this so that we can protect ourselves. But unfortunately, because of political correctness and because of media and general government unwillingness to face the sources of Islamic terrorism, these things remain largely unknown. Islamic fundamentalism is a sleeper cell in America. A good point, a, a good case in point, is the story of Saladin. Saladin is a great hero in Islam. Saladin was the one who defeated the Crusades. There was a treaty that's supposed to be happening between the Crusades and Saladin. And the story goes as follows. The Arab mediator came to Saladin and said, the Quran says that if they concede to peace, then concede to it. Which means that if the enemy wants peace, let's have peace which is a verse you can find directly in the Quran. And Saladin responded with a great answer when he stated to the guy, you are an Arab and I'm a Kurd. You should know the Quran better than I. Don't forget the Quran also says, why should we concede for peace when we have the upper hand? So you find both verses in the Quran. Peace, you concede to peace when you are the weaker party. This is why you hear the term hudna. Hudna is a peace treaty, ceasefire. In Iraq, uh, Sadr asked for hudna because he knew he can't defeat the Americans. You have hudnas all over when the uh, enemy is stronger than you are. But as soon as you gain strength, then you don't concede for peace. This is why the face of Islamic fundamentalism in the West has a facade that Islam is a peaceful religion because they are waiting to have more Islamic immigrants, they're waiting to increase in number, waiting to increase in political power, and once they do, then look out. You'll see the real face of Islamic fundamentalism here in America. <laughs> ويظهر الشريط أحد الأشخاص وهو يقوم بتفخيخ حافلة صغيرة بعدد من القذائف الصاروخية قمنا بتفخيخ هذه السيارة لاعتراض رتل أمريكي ونقسم بالله العظيم أن غايتنا هم جنود الكفر والاحتلال ولا نريد من وراء ذلك أن نؤذي مدنيا لأن دم المسلم أغلى ما يكون عندنا الله أكبر 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 It's unfortunate, but there is no negotiating with the jihadists. There is no striking a deal with them. Islamic law is very clear on that. And here, once again, is an example. We need to take Islam seriously. Islamic law does not allow for treaties. It does not allow for negotiated settlements between Muslim states and non-Muslim states. All it allows for is a temporary period of up to 10 years of hudna, or what is commonly translated as truce, to allow the Islamic forces to gather their strength. But that's not the same as peace as we know it. That's not the same as the absence of a state of war. That's only a temporary lull in a war that the jihadists consider has gone on for 14 centuries and are willing to fight for 14 more.
So when you meet in fight, jihad in Allah's cause, those who disbelieve smite at their necks till when you have killed and wounded many of them, then bind a bond firmly on them, take them as captives. Thus you are ordered by Allah to continue in carrying out jihad against the disbelievers till they embrace Islam, are saved from the punishment in the hellfire, or at least come under your protection. But if it had been Allah's will, he himself could certainly have punished them without you. But he lets you fight in order to test you, some with others. But those who are killed in the way of Allah, he will never let their deeds be lost. In Islamic thinking, the world is divided into the house of Islam, where Islamic polity has been established, where uh, Allah rules supreme, and uh, the house of war, which is the rest of the world. Uh, this dichotomy is uh, reminiscent of other totalitarian ideologies, and most explicitly communism. Both communism and Islam seek a, the end of history in this world. The end of history will come when either the whole of our planet becomes Dar or Islam, or else when uh, the proletarian revolution brings the avant-garde of the working class to, to power all over the world, which will be the end of state, the end of money, and the end of class oppression. In both cases, uh, it is possible to have a period of truce. It is possible to have what would be called in modern parlance peaceful coexistence. But that peaceful coexistence is a tactical ploy and not a permanent solution. Allah's apostle said, I have been ordered to fight with the people till they say, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. If we consider that if only we changed our policies toward Israel, and if only we changed our policies toward Iraq, or changed our policies toward something else, if only we hadn't taken out the Mossadegh regime in Iran in 1953, and other things people have said to me, these ideas are ridiculous. They're based on a fundamental misunderstanding of the motives and goals of the jihadists. This is not a conflict that was created with the creation of the State of Israel, or a conflict that was created when American armies went into Iraq. The global jihad has gone on without interruption, without significant interruption, since the seventh century. And it only declined in force and activity at periods when the Islamic world was too weak to prosecute it.